Hey YouTube, welcome to the evolution of the base set booster pack. Really cool video that I thought of, and I've got some cool secrets to share with everyone. So I'm going to show you guys the evolution of the base set packs. Essentially explain to you a little bit more about the base set, how it came to be, or well, how each parts of it came to be anyways. So obviously, as you know, base set was the very first English set ever made way back in the day. <clears throat> so uh, obviously the first thing that they had with base set was when they came out and they started printing them based on the Japanese version they came out with the first set that was released in America or well I guess for English all over the world was base set first edition so here is the original three pack designs from base set first edition now you can tell that it was first edition because it got a cool little first edition stamp on the very bottom right along with the trading card game on the bottom right above 11 tradable game cards. Now there was three different versions. We have the Blastoise, the Charizard, and we have the Venusaur. These are the very first uh, packs in the first set ever made for us, which is pretty cool. These were the most... Or, in well, most people's mind, the rarest packs to get in English, although I'll show you guys something later. But yeah, they made a limited number of these before they started printing the next set. So they started off with the obviously first edition set, which is the premium set, sort of the, I guess, what do you call it? For the first people, it's kind of, you know, <clears throat> first come, first serve sort of like the preview for everyone else who would buy one later on usually they did not show put these in stores they were usually for you know the pre-releases along with um some of the uh hobby stores that got these the boxes were extremely rare to find now when they stopped making the first editions they transitioned over to the shadowless set the shadowless set is very similar to the base set first edition is in the fact that it does not have shadows on the cards just like the base set first edition one you can tell that they're very similar in the fact that they have the tradable games card and the trading card on the very bottom of the pack um, these were shadowless but did not have the first edition stamp also came in three different pack designs I just happened to have them in the cool blister form with the Venusaur and Blastoise I've actually got almost like 36 of these packs I'm not going to sell any of them but I do have quite a bit of these. And here is the Charizard version. This was the second set that was ever made. Well, while they made this set, <clears throat> there came a time about halfway through the year that they decided that they were unhappy with what they had done. They did not like this set and they felt that it was kind of a failure in the minds of these buyers, mainly because not many people were buying them. The cards weren't as pretty as they thought they should be. So they decided to do a sort of, you know, redesign of the cards. And that's where the whole thing where um, the saying where some of them were unlimited and some were shadowless. The shadowless were the ones that had the tradable game cards, as you can see on the bottom. And those are the ones without shadows on them. Well, they decided to add shadows to the cards and they made what we consider the unlimited base set. Oh, I once messed that up already, but <clears throat> a limited base set, which they changed the pack design substantially, putting the trading card game at the very top, and then they also changed the bottom with 11 additional game cards, which is pretty cool. These ones came with shadows. They were a lot happier. They mass produced these. I mean, absolutely mass produced them. There were so many that they pretty much were sitting in warehouses all around the United States and all over the countries that they actually were sold in. And that's why you can still find these boxes and packs fairly easy on eBay and Amazon and all these trading, you know, card game uh, websites. So these were a hit back then and are still a hit. The prices have gone up substantially, around $10 a pack, which is pretty cool. But I am not done as you guys... I've already ruined it a bit, but as you guys saw, there was actually 
a rarer set. A rarer set than all three of these. In fact, so rare that not many people actually know about it. And the cool thing about this set that no one really is very aware of, I know some people may be aware of these and have actually opened up packs from them, and a lot of people may have opened up packs from this set that they were unaware of. Mainly back then they really didn't care about looking for the first edition or the trading card. But there was another version of the packs that were that was released in very small quantities based on an error that happened while they were transitioning from the trading card of the Shadowless to the Unlimited. There was an extra set that they had printed out. And I know obviously these were all the same base set but they were different styles. This being first edition, this being shadowless without the first edition on it, and then the unlimited with the cool shadows. But there was an, another set that was made in between shadowless and base set unlimited, which I will show you now. It is called what I would consider the triangle base set, mainly because it was an error set that was printed out way back in the day when they were transitioning from the shadows, they tried to create a new pack design, mainly the one that would we would consider the unlimited pack design. I consider these a triangle because it has the cool error on the bottom of a triangle. Now, what happened was during the printing, a Pokemon company, or I guess you can sell Wizards of the Coast, did not like to waste money. They loved the fact that they could reproduce things and reuse. A lot of people may be aware of those boxes out there that had shadowless pack designs but had limited cards inside or had the other way around. They had, you know, the boxes that had the shadowless on it but was actually unlimited in the inside and the Wizards of the Coast stamp. All these errors that were made, and they weren't actually errors. There was the company reusing packaging material to package the cards thinking that no one would really care because they're the same cards. Who would really care? The only ones that they would care about would be the first edition, which were clearly marked. There was no errors ever made in the set, except for the cards, obviously. The packs were easy to know. The boxes didn't have, which is the co-stamped on it. First edition stamps were on every one of the packs. It was very simple. But when they got into the unlimited ones, they really did not care. Well, what happened was when they were creating these packs, these unlimited ones, they tried out a few different designs. There was an error in making them when they first came out. They had changed the pack designs to this. They had the 11 additional game cards, and they had the trading card game on top. Well, when they printed out some of the uh, quantities to sell in stores, one of the manufacturing places, one of the factories that they had, accidentally, when they changed the pack designs, used the old version of the first edition, they used this one and did some photoshopping and changed it. They moved some things around and added some lettering. That's the main reason why the packs are almost identical except for some of the things are moved around. Well, accidentally printed out some of them and what do you know? They forgot to take the first edition off of them. Well, Wizards of the Coast not being a company to just throw out hundreds and, you know, thousands of, you know, packaging and cards decided, you know what, let's just re-stamp them and they stamped over the first edition. I don't know if you guys can see, but there used to be a first edition stamp on these cards, or these packs, I would say. And this one is probably the best one that you can actually can see. You can see the little first edition. Now, the only reason why they actually went over and reprinted on top of these was because they did not want to trick people with first edition. They did not want to show people that they had made this mistake and so they poorly did a really horrible job by stamping over it. Mainly because if you got a pack like this and it said first edition, you opened it up and you were angry that you paid more for a first edition pack and there were unlimited cards inside, you would not be unhappy. And that's why they made the triangle. Why they made the triangle, I have no idea. That is still a mystery to me. Um, whoever did the packaging design was clearly not doing it properly and these were released into the general public. Now there was a very small quantity released. Um, I have never actually seen anyone open a box that had these, nor do I know anything about what the boxes look like. But I am assuming the boxes were the similar ones that had the Wizards of the Coast stamp on it and the Shadowless or something close to 
boxes or even had the unlimited boxes so that is still a mystery i've never been able to come across them i have seen these before but in extreme rarity these are almost in the well these are impossible to find i would have to say good luck ever finding these i these are rarer than the first edition packs in my personal opinion uh, mainly because they were think of one factory printing one mistake for a few hours that's how many packs were released extremely small limited quantity based on a small graphical error that was obviously finished and redone and formed into the unlimited base set so although there are unlimited cards in this it's extremely rare to find one of these packs now the cool thing is i found these based on a user not really understanding what it was they thought they were fake packs and i sold they sold them to me for 20 bucks not a pack, but 20 bucks altogether. I've seen these go for way more, an excessive amount of money, several hundred dollars. These are 100% real, made by Wizards of the Coast. They got the cool stamps as the same unlimited. It's got the heat striations, which are almost impossible to duplicate with English packs way back in the day. It's got all the expert level. It's got all these same designs as the unlimited. As you can see, it was meant to be an unlimited pack, but it was never uh, meant to have the first edition. So, very cool air pack. I would love to hear what you guys have to say, or if you guys know any more information about these triangle packs. They are extremely rare. Um, I'm pretty happy to find them all sealed. Um, I hope to find more in the future, so maybe I can open one up for you guys to show you what's inside. I'm not sure if they contain error cards or whatnot. I just know about the packs. So I hope you guys enjoyed the evolution of the base scent. I really enjoyed finding these for you guys and making this video. It was a pleasure to do it. And uh, as always, comment below and let me know what you think. And uh, I'll see you guys in a later video.